Thank you. Um, how much impact does the way in which the child was conceived have on the child? So if the child was conceived, say, of rape or um, violence, um, will that have an impact upon the child? Yeah. Uh, it would just um, be impacted by the emotions of the people involved. So it's the same, it's the same principle. But obviously, in a situation like that, there's a lot of distress, probably, on the part of the mother, and probably a lot of um, quite dark emotions coming from the father. If, if that is the case with rape, so it would have an impact on that soul. Yeah. So, so if the if so the male usually who involves himself in rape is it's due to having a feeling of powerlessness with women and so he wants to exercise his power violently. So there will be that kind of emotion projected at the child and the, and the woman will have a lot of different emotions too, not just from the event but prior to the event that would attract the event anyway. And those particular emotions would also uh, impact upon the child. So it would be, but again, all of these can be quite easily healed if we own them all. We talk about the effect of denial versus feeling later. So a lot of people feel, and it's just something we'd like to say right now, is a lot of people feel that if you're feeling your emotions, that's when you're damaging someone else. But the reality is, is when you're not feeling your emotions, that's when you're actually being the most damaging. So, for example, a woman who is pregnant from a rape, if she decides, well, I can't cry because I have this child now inside of me growing, it's actually more damaging to her than if she actually lets go of her grief during her pregnancy. It's more damaging to the child as well as to herself. If she, it's better for her if she lets go of the grief during her pregnancy rather than waiting until the child is born or holding on to it for later. Does that make sense?